Come what may, bring it on, I'm gonna love it. Welcome to LDS Unmarried Life, a podcast for single members of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who find themselves single either because they're divorced, widowed, or not yet married, and there is no affiliation with the church. This podcast can be found on AnnetteTalks.com, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, and I think that's about it. Anyway, um, also, I I have a Patreon account now at patreon.com forward slash Annette Talks, and I would encourage you to visit that and um, see if you want to help me out a little bit. All right, so let's get to it. Today, I am joined via uh, teleconference um, with Jim Jacobs, who has joined me on the show before. He is a relationship coach, a dating coach. Anyway, licensed counselor. Hi, Jim. Hi, Annette. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm glad to be with you again. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's good to, to be with you and to see you on the computer. Since it's snowing outside, it's a lot more convenient than driving. Yes. yes. <laughs> nice March weather we're having here. Yeah, just love it. Almost April. <laughs> anyway, um, remind us of, again of your licensures. Thank you for asking. Again, my name is Jim Jacobs. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I'm a certified Daring Way facilitator in the work of Brene Brown, uh, where we're working to help people live with more integrity and authenticity and be more brave and show up for their lives and enjoy their lives more. Um, I also do coaching, relationship coaching, dating coaching, uh, and I'm a marriage and family educator uh, working to help people um, to overcome the challenges in their life or live better lives or live with more authenticity and integrity. Um, you can check out more information on me uh, through jimrjacobs.com or drivinglessonsforlife.com. Uh, Driving Lessons for Life, that's the title of my book. Um, and it's a fun way to uh, get some help in setting goals and leadership and change, uh, inspirational fun. And uh, so if I can help in any way, please don't hesitate to contact me through those means. And you do phone, um, not interviews, but sessions with people that need them, right? You betcha. I can do things over phone or the internet. Uh, Love to meet people in person as well. All right. So you can reach people not just in Denver Metro or anyway. All right. Great. I wanted Uh, to listen. Licensed in Nebraska and Wyoming. Uh, So the so if there's licensed services that people want, I can do that for people in Nebraska and Wyoming as well. All right. But you can help anyone with dating coaching. Correct. Wherever you live, wherever you live in the world, I can. I'm happy to help. Awesome. I'd like to see some of those Filipinos reaching out to you. <laughs> that, that sounds good to me or, or wherever. Yeah, let's get anybody. Uh, let's let's awesome. spread this throughout the world. That's right. We could all use some help. Definitely. All right. So today we are doing the second part of advice from a dating coach. And um, I put the call out on Facebook for questions and I got several. And I kind of looked them over with Jim and we talked about what... Um, how the best way to present this to help as many people as we can. And we found that the questions kind of fell into two categories, um, one on making an impression and the second on um, setting boundaries in a relationship. So we're going to start with the making an impression. And the question that got it started was, how do you balance being yourself but also make choices to give the best impression? And so... This discussion, or this started a discussion about, well, how do you make the first best impression? And um, and usually with, with online dating, that means a first date. And so I just thought I would start out by saying I related to this question because I don't have a lot of second dates, just to be honest. And so I've been trying to figure out why that is. And I got a book from my friend. She loaned it to me. uh, I think it's called Getting Past Hello or no, Having Him at Hello. And um, it basically talks about how to to get past a first date. So obviously I'm not the only one having this problem. And so uh, I went, um, it was funny because I I went on a date with this gentleman and it went pretty well, but I noticed that I was doing, spending a lot of time telling him about how I market my new podcast website and I was showing him my Facebook page and telling him all the little tips and tricks to getting your, um, getting yourself out there. And so it was a decent date, but I didn't get asked out by him again. 
And then I read this book and, and one of the things she does is she puts people in the different categories of what you're doing on a first date that was wrong, basically. And one of them was like, you're too businessy, like you're the business person. And so the person that you're out with thinks, boy, I'd really like to hire that person, but not necessarily take them out again. And so I read that and then like two weeks later, I got a text from this guy and he says, hey, I'd like to hire you to do some marketing for me. <laughs> so it begs the question, how do we know if we're sharing too much of whatever on a first date? Oh, because another one, what was, what was interesting was another thing she brought up was that a lady went on a date, because this is a dating coach that wrote the book. A lady went on a date and she told the guy she was never interested in leaving New York City. She loved New York. She was never leaving. And he never asked her out again. And, and this lady asked the man, why did you never ask her out again? And he said, well, I don't want to live in New York forever. And so she never even got a second date. And this lady later said, well, I, you know, I would move for the right person. But because she said something wrong, I'm doing air quotes and wrong, on a first date, she didn't get asked out again. So, Jim, what can we do? We do to get a second date that what are we doing wrong that might not get us past that first date? And then thank you so much. I, I appreciate you being willing to share kind of a personal experience like that where you're learning kind of in the trenches, which I think is what all of us have to do. Um, and the vulnerability of sharing kind of that story is kind of really nice that we can see that, hey, you're, you're working on this and we're all working on this to try to, to, to kind of figure out how can we move forward in our relationships. And uh, as, as you've illustrated, it's, it can be scary, it can be difficult. And th this question so fascinates me and the other questions on making an impression too. And obviously I don't know exactly what's the story or all the information behind this question, but this idea of balancing being yourself and making a first impression kind of implies that we're like trying to do two different things there. Um, so it, it kind of implies that sometimes we're not being ourselves because we're so focused on making an impression. So your example that you shared, your, your personal example that you shared, appreciate again that courage. Um, oh, wait, just for the record, I have been on second and third and fourth <laughs> dates. I don't want anybody to think I'm never getting yeah, past. Yeah. I've been in relationships, but it just feels like I spend a lot of time in first dates. And so, yeah. and a lot of people I talk to have said the same thing. They've been, they yeah. spend way more time in first dates than they would like to. Anyway. Yeah. So, so I, I appreciate that. And I don't, I don't think we felt like that you were failing. For this. <laughs> but the example is really helpful because in a, in a way you weren't truly being yourself. I mean, you were being a part of you, something you're excited about, something you enjoy, something that's valuable to you. Um, but when we're so focused on, on this making a good first impression or making a good impression to them, sometimes we fall into this role of trying to perfect or please or perform um, and, and in, instead then we end up not being ourselves. So we end up um, not kind of sharing who we really are. And if we really want a relationship to progress, then at some point we're going to have to be who we really are. And if all of a sudden that who we really are is different than the person we've been presenting, then that may actually, we may end up backfiring later on in the third or fourth relationship or the third and fourth date. I'm sorry about that. Um, so I think, first of all, we need to accept that having a lot of just first dates is not an indication of failing. If, if you're going on first dates, that's fantastic. Um, and many times, if we look at kind of the statistics of dating, that's, that's, that's part of the game. Like some people are going to decide on that very first date that they don't want to, to go out with you anymore, or they may be busy or they may whatever. Um, and, and so that's not an indication of failure. But obviously, if we're not having any move to second or third or fourth dates, then we want to look at ourselves. So impression management really has to be is that we need to be ourselves from the very beginning. We need to focus on being our best self and not perf if we're perfecting, pleasing and performing, then, then we're not being ourselves. And so obviously we want to dress up. We want to look nice. We want to smell nice. Uh, that's probably more for the men. Um, and, <laughs> and, 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 and we need to do that. But, uh, but be yourself from the very beginning. So I sometimes think um, I'm too myself. I mean, aside from that date, I, I sometimes feel like I maybe overwhelm guys on a first date because 
I, I have kind of a, an outgoing, strong personality, and I, I think I'm a little bit of a nervous talker um, sometimes. So I just think, is, should we dial back what, our, what we feel like we should be doing sometimes? I mean, I guess I need you with me on a date because <laughs> I, I, I don't want to give too much of myself so that the guy's like, yeah, this girl is just way more than I can handle. But then the other part of me says, I want a guy that wants to, that likes me as I come across on the first date because that's who I am. And so maybe yeah. I'm just weeding out the guys that don't like or can't handle what I'm offering. Yeah, yeah. And that, that is such an awesome question. And I don't know that you really want to do a Cyrano de Bergiac type of me talking <laughs> In the bushes and telling you what to say on a date or whatever, but it sure seems like a good idea in the moment kind of thing. Um, and you bring up a great point, which um, I think in the work that I do professionally in terms of coaching people or whatever, is that when you and I feel vulnerable, and and really any first date is a very vulnerable experience, you're, you're, it's worse than a job interview. I mean, you're like putting yourself out there. And when you and I are most vulnerable, we often want a hot wire connection with somebody. We want to try to make it work. So often it's not unusual for people to overshare <laughs> on their very first date or be a nervous talker or download, you know, uh, every experience that they've had in their life. Or um, as I like to say, dump the whole load of hay on them in terms of your experience or your weaknesses or your background or whatever, because we feel nervous, we want to hotwire that connection. And so, yeah, we can, part of that impression management is that we also have to be careful that when we're being ourselves and we're feeling nervous or whatever, that we don't just start sharing everything that, that's gone on in our life or getting too, too talkative about too much information. Um, I like to look at it as kind of like a house. Um, and when we look at a relationship with people, we should progress naturally through the house, if you will. And so when you're on a first date with someone, that's kind of like they're now coming into your entryway and maybe into your living room. You know, the online interactions are there on your front porch, you know, um, you're interacting with them. And so you share what's appropriate on the front porch. And then when you invite them into your living room on that first date, then you're going to share what's appropriate for the, for the living room. And you're not, you're going to allow time enough to move throughout the rooms where people get themselves in trouble is they're taking somebody from outside of their home on the front porch and they're inviting them up to the bedroom. Um, and outside of the church, that's literally, I hope it's not happening with members of the church, but, but metaphorically when we, on that first date, when we're trying to hotwire some kind of connection with somebody, maybe we're attracted to, or that we seem like we like, we've had some great online interactions with them. We want to hotwire that connection and really get close to them too quickly. And we're moving them metaphorically from the living room to the bedroom or the front porch to the bedroom, um, rather than taking our time and recognizing we're going to, if this works out, we're going to have time to let this relationship progress. Yeah, I like that. And I think, I mean, that, that's a great analogy, first of all. It's making me think about my front porch, Stella. <laughs> whenever, whenever someone does analogies, I start taking them too literally, and I'm thinking about my sure. living room needs to be cleaned up. But anyway, um, I, I, I like that because I can see, yeah, many times where I think there's this fear in the back of our head, we're not going to get past the first date again. So how can I get past a first date? And maybe the way to do that is to, yeah, bring them into the family room or into the kitchen, or Evans into the bedroom. We don't want to do that metaphorically or literally. But I can see that now uh, and a lot of times because I'm thinking, oh, I've got to make this person laugh. Oh, I've got to make this person like me. And what, what did you call that? You said there was uh, pleasing. Performing, performing ple perfecting, and pleasing. Yeah, do you hear that? I got to, I got to. Well, all of a sudden, you're not, in, you're not being yourself in that moment. Oh, man. If it's, if it's I got it, I got it, I got it. Now you're perfecting, you're performing, you're pleasing rather than saying, hey, in a good relationship, a principle that's guided me a lot is, is, a, is a proverb of things that grow slowly live longer. And mm -hmm. so part of the challenge we face on when we're trying to make a good impression or whatever is we're getting into this place where we're trying to speed this up. We're trying to make something happen. Again, we're trying to hotwire this connection 
rather than slowing down and letting things progress in a series of steps. Like when you think about inviting your ministering companionships, when they, if they come to your home, when you first meet them, you are going to invite them into your living room. You're not going to take them into the kitchen or the back, back patio or upstairs into your bedroom or whatever. You right. want to get to know them. You want to build that time and you want to take your time doing that. The same thing with dating is we've got to, we've got to, we've got to push back against this artificial rush of, I got to, I got to, I got to make this happen. I got to do this. I got to, I got to look great. I got to smell great. I got to, I mean, I, I got to say the right things. I got to make them like me. I got to make them be excited about me, whatever. No, just go and enjoy the time and let it unfold gradually. Wow. Yeah, that's that's kind of an aha moment for me because I, I feel like I definitely perform when I go out. And and I'm so hyper-conscious of what kind of impression am I making. Where yeah. uh, You know, it's, which is funny. And those are with the guys that I'm, I think, are quality guys that I'm really interested in. <laughs> Whereas... Sometimes I'll go out with someone and I, I think ahead of time, this is probably not going to go anywhere because of whatever reason, right? Maybe their, their situation is not something I'm interested in, like they've got small kids at home or something like that. And I will go into those like the opposite, just like totally casual, like whatever. And those are probably the better dates because I'm not, you know, sitting on the yeah. edge of my chair trying to make sure... Yeah. Is my hair good right now? Am I making enough eye contact? Am yeah. I saying enough funny things? Is he getting the impression of who I am? Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. So you're so nervous and uptight, which I mean, I, I get it. I know what it's like to be on a first date uh, or a second date or a third date or a fourth date. Yeah. Um, you know, you're so nervous. You're so anxious. So, I mean, we should put out our best self on a date. But if you feel like you're performing or if your mind is preoccupied with, oh, my gosh, what's he thinking or what's she thinking or I got to do this or, oh, oh, my gosh, I forgot to say this or or I shouldn't have said that or whatever kind of thing. Um, recognize that it, that it, that a healthy relationship is going to develop over time as you as you slowly kind of move. And, and you shouldn't you shouldn't dump the whole load of hay on them. You shouldn't be. I sometimes think that we should resist the temptation to talk about why we're single on that very first date. Um, because you're really kind of at that point of, no, this is our first opportunity to just to meet each other and have a good experience with each other. Um, I, I personally think that some of the first best dates are an activity, not a sit down and have dinner together kind of thing. Because the reason for that is, is that's going to maybe magnify this sense that we have to perform or this sense that we have to, you know, uh, show off because now it's it's intimate. We're face to face with each other, sitting in the booth at Applebee's or whatever kind of thing, and we're talking to each other. Um, versus going on a hike, versus yeah. um, you know, going and playing mini golf or something, because you've got this activity that you're engaging in, and then you're talking and bantering along the way, and that usually helps most of us to relax because the activity helps us to relax so that we're not kind of then in this face-to-face -face where we, okay, now we gotta wait for our food to come. So we gotta fill this silence with conversation. And then maybe if the, the mini golf game goes well or the hike goes well, then you could say, hey, why don't we go get a bagel? Um, you know, there's an Einstein's bagel not far from here. Why don't we go get a bagel and we can sit and talk. And then you have a few, you know, half an hour to sit and talk and it's gonna be a natural flow because because sometimes we, we need to look at what environment's going to help us not to feel that pressure that you say you're feeling like, I got it, I got it, I got it. That's great. No, I really like that. I have something I call the Annette date <laughs> where we go. There's a there's a, um, a hike not too far from my place. And I like to go and sometimes I'll meet a guy there, but I like to do a hike. It's about a 45 minute hike. And then we go eat after that. And yeah. if we still like each other after that you know, the Mexican food, because I like Mexican, then we could always go get pie. So it's like yeah. you take it in stages. Did it go well yeah. here? If it goes well here, then we can go to the next stage. And if it goes yeah. well to the next stage, then yeah. take it to the next one. The living room felt good. Hey, do you want to head into the kitchen and grab something to eat? And now we can oh. increase the intimacy, but you're doing it in steps and it's gradual. And even if, let's say the first time that you say, hey, you want to go grab a little something to eat or drink or something like that, maybe they say no that time. That doesn't mean you did bad. It just means... Let's look at that progression. But I think too many of us are, are trying to rev things up too fast and head down that dating road of commitment. We even got some questions that maybe we'll talk when we talk about the boundaries part of it is how do we keep people from moving too fast? Well, so one of the best ways to do that is to work on being real and being off 
authentic when we go on a date instead of trying trying to put on an act. So if you're trying to balance putting on an act and showing them your real self, then you probably ought to step back and look at what you're doing so that you can feel comfortable. And I'm not, I'm saying you in general, not you and Ed. Oh yeah, I know. I <laughs> yeah, so we can look at, we can look at what we're doing right. and what's happening inside us that we feel like we have to act or that we have to put on some sort of perfect persona and perform for this person rather than just like you said, on those casual dates, you just relax. So maybe, maybe this is a silly play on things. What if we pretended that every date wasn't really going to go anywhere so that we could relax? Because if we did that and we just focused on building friendship and just enjoying being with a person, we'd probably see more results because we're relaxed and we're not performing. Yeah, I like that. Just assume going in, hey, this is just a one-time thing and yeah. we're just meeting up. And, and it really is. Every time it's just a one-time thing. Yeah, you're right. There's no guarantee. <laughs> There's no guarantee that anything is going to progress beyond where it's at. But yeah. one thing I like to do is... is um, I tell myself, you know, even if it doesn't work out, if if I like the guy, if he's a quality person, but we don't connect romantically, he becomes part of my tribe. Correct. And um, and who knows if someone in my tribe might like someone else in my tribe, or maybe this person is there for another reason. You know, like um, I ended up doing some work for that one guy. They didn't hire you. <laughs> Which was great. But I also, you know, I have people that end up on my podcast, or I have people that... Um, end up in my life for some other reason. And it's great. So I have like a whole bunch of friends now that I wouldn't have had if I hadn't gone on some of those first dates. And isn't that really, I mean, that just adds vibrancy to life. Um, I've had the same experience where, where maybe it didn't turn into a, a romantic relationship or a dating kind of thing, but it, it sure has enriched my life to meet really incredible people. I've had online interactions with people all over the world, which is just absolutely amazing to me. And, and yeah, no, we're not going to go off and get married and that's okay. Um, and so let's take some of the pressure off by, by, by thinking that we have to somehow manage what they see in us. Again, let's put out our best self. So let's dress up and look good and, and let's, let's be respectful and good mannered and all of that stuff. But let's not let's stop trying so hard to make something happen or to hotwire something. That's awesome. Great. I like it. All right. So um, should we shift gears into going to boundaries um, with the yeah, next question? The natural flow to look at. Okay, so how in the world do we do that? Like if things are progressing, if we manage to relax and kind of see something progressing, how do how do we take it to the next step? Yeah, and and you um, you use the acronym braving. Right. This is something that yeah. you use in and this is something that we uh, can use in our dating life as as well as other parts of our life. Right. So can yeah. you give us an overview? Uh, tell us what braving stands for and then we'll see if we can apply it in uh, setting boundaries. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. I think before we do that, though, let's look at the, the some of the other questions really get to this where right. we said that, you know, there was a theme with that. You know, we have questions in here that says, hey, we've got we've got people moving way too fast. Right. You know, how do you slow people down. Now, the question the question we got was asked by a woman, but that happens for men as well. Um, and so so that issue of kind of moving too fast, how do we handle that? How do we handle people who, um, you know, seem to like 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 I get the word that was used in one of the questions was sabotaging things. Um, how do I. How do I move forward when people maybe don't know who I really am yet and kind of thing. And so oftentimes when we go in, we go into dating, you know, we're looking for, well, like, I guess one of the other questions was, what are some of the common mistakes that we make or how do we really establish a good two-way relationship? And what we've talked about with impressions is part of that, which is if we're perfecting, performing and pleasing, uh, and that's our focus and we're worried, you know, we've got that, I got to, I got to do this. I got to do that mentality. Then we're not going to be real and authentic. So relationships tend to sour after that, but what criteria can we use to be able to do this? And the concept of braving comes from the work of Brene Brown. Uh, again, I'm a daring way facilitator, which authorizes me to, to train in this kind of work. And it's been one of the most fundamental things that has helped me, not in just, just dating relationships, but in relationships in general, is this is really the science of building trust and building closeness and connection with people. So BRAVING is an acronym that represents kind of what we find in a successful relationship 
and how you move a relationship and what we should be looking for. I don't know if you go in and you look at people's dating profiles and stuff like that. First of all, they look perfect because we're maybe in our dating profiles, perfecting, performing and pleasing a little bit too. Right. Um, so we're putting out the best stats and what we're good at. And we've got the best pictures and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but what we want to start looking at is how do we move it to this point where we can say what I'm looking for? Because, you know, being an active member of the church is hard to measure. Um, some people will say, I'm looking for someone who attends the temple regularly. Being silly here, if I go once a year, that's regularly. <laughs> but I'm not sure that's what you're looking for. How do, you, how, do you, how do you measure active? How do you measure if a relationship is progressing? How do you measure if you should get out of a relationship? So braving is a tool that you can use to do that. So the B stands for boundaries. In a healthy relationship, both you and I can say what's okay and what's not okay, and that is honored. So we can say, no, I don't want to kiss yet, or I don't want to hold hands. Um, we can say, yes, I would like to kiss. We can say what's okay and what's not okay in the relationship. And so when somebody start, pushes against that, then right, right there... <laughs> that's, know, a, that's, a, that's an issue to look at. Yes. So if you're, if you're on a second date with a man or a woman and they're pushing for something that you don't want and you say, I'd rather not do that or I'm not okay with that yet or I'm not ready for that yet and they push against that, then that's information that would help you know whether or not this is. Now, maybe you shouldn't decide right in that moment, but you could. You say, hey, this person doesn't respect my boundaries. And I've been on many dates where I saw either someone pushing my boundaries, I'm not comfortable with that, and I said something, and they continued to push me. I've seen that happen online, especially, oh, yeah. pushing me for things that's not okay. Online, it's a little bit easier because you can just say, I, you know, I've moved on to other things or whatever. But when you're in person, so boundaries, I can say what's okay and what's not okay. Yeah, um, I think that's extremely huge in the single scene. I see a lot of that, too. Whenever I, I talk to a lot of people, and... When they tell me, uh, and, and next or two weeks from now, we're going to do an um, episode on, on online dating stories. And I've already heard a lot of them. And I would say that's probably the number one problem that I, that I hear is that someone's boundaries were not respected in a big way. Yes. And um, I, I, I don't know if this is a self-esteem issue or if it's, a, it's an issue of um, wanting a relationship badly enough that you're willing to look past that. But I hear a lot of people allow things that I just don't understand why they're allowing. Um, and I think if, if someone's, if someone's pushing your boundary and you're allowing it again and again, doesn't that mean you maybe need to reevaluate where you're at <laughs> as a person? Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, and if we think that that's going to go away, if we continue the relationship, it's not. And the assumption in these kind of conversations, as we talked before we started today, Annette, is that it's always the man pushing the boundaries, but that's not always the case. No. So you know, in, if you can't say what's okay and what's not okay in a relationship, then it's probably not a relationship that you want to go forward with. Right. Um, and yeah, and, and it's not even just the single dating scene. I, it, it applies to bosses, children, exactly. friends, parents, exactly. everyone. And thank you for applying that to every relationship, because this is not just about dating. This is about what we know about what makes relationships work. And what we know is that if, the, if each pretty person can say what's okay and what's not okay, and it's honored, then that makes for a strong and healthy relationship. So you need to date enough time to see, do they respect what I say is okay or not okay, and vice versa. Great. The R stands for reliability. Okay. And reliability is that this person is consistent, and they do what they said they were going to do. They, they, they just do what they said they're going to do. So if they say they're going to call you tomorrow <laughs> and they don't call you, then that's not very reliable. Now, that means that doesn't mean necessarily you should reject them because people have accidents or things come up or whatever. But 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 you, you want to see and have enough time where you can see that that this person does what they said they would do. And of course, you need to be the person that does what you said you would do. So if you say something, then you need to follow through with that. That goes right close into the A, which is accountability which is reliability and accountability are kind of kind of twin sisters, if you will. Accountability is that you, you are taking responsibility for yourself, for your own life, for your feelings, and you apologize if necessary, or you correct things if necessary, rather than pushing that on the other person. And obviously you want them to take responsibility for their happiness themselves 
their actions and apologize if they need to. So those two really go together. Are they reliable and are they accountable? Do they take ownership for themselves? Right. So if, if someone seems less than reliable, uh, but then they, uh, they take, take accountability for that, then there might be a little bit more leeway. Because I, I mean, for instance, I have a friend that's late all the time, yeah. <laughs> all the time. And, but she takes full accountability for it. And we've had the discussion about it. And I've just kind of come to the place where I know if I need somebody that's going to be on time, it's probably not going to be her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If we think about it in a gospel concept context, the Lord knows that we're going to sin. Mm-hmm. And so the issue is not getting to a point where we never sin. The issue is, do we reliably repent And do we reliably take accountability for ourselves and the wrongs that we've done and take the steps to correct them? Why would it be any different in our most important relationships, especially if we're looking for a romantic partner to go forward in our lives with? We want them to be accountable and reliable um, because that's such a great predictor of consistency and goodness in a relationship. That's great. So the V stands for the vault. That's because when cool people come up with acronyms, they have to sometimes be creative to come up with a a word that fits. So when you think vault, you're going to think safety, security, and trust. And so that means that the things that we talk about, the things that we share, the information that we share is kept confidential and between us. It's not shared inappropriately. This also in the world of social media, especially in the dating world, Mm. uh, we probably shouldn't post a picture of us on our first date if we have not asked for permission. We should probably not post a relationship status until we've asked for permission to do that, because what we want to do is protect the sanctity of our relationship and our interactions with each other. And in this society where we're kind of pretty liberal about sharing everything that's going on in our lives, we need to recognize a healthy relationship there's going to be a great measure of respect for the information and the things that are shared. So if you go on a date and then you go back home and talk to your best friend and you share all the details about the date and everything they told you and all the personal things they told you, or sometimes we even get on social media and we start stalking them Mm -hmm. or whatever kind of thing. And we look into all of this stuff, you know, that's probably not respecting the sanctity of the relationship. So in a good, healthy relationship that's progressing in a healthy way, there will be a good measure of respect for privacy and the sanctity and sacredness of the things that we share with each other. I don't want to go on a date with somebody. Maybe it's my second or third date. And maybe at that point I'm going to share with them my, you know, kind of how my marriage ended or something like that. I don't want to hear that shared through some channel with somebody else and then find out somebody heard my story from somebody else. That would be a breach of the vault. So keeping sacred what's sacred between us. Yeah. Well, I also think, too, with um, social media, uh, I don't really think you should be sharing that you're dating someone until it's pretty serious and that you both agree. I've just seen too many times someone will put in a relationship and then, oh, three or four weeks later, I hear they're not in a relationship anymore, but yeah. yet there's no not in a relationship status. Yeah. And so yeah. we're all wondering, well, what happened? Uh I, and then, especially if you know both of them, and that's where rumors start. And just, I just think it's better to leave it off altogether and, until maybe you're engaged and you just want everyone to know you're officially off the market. And that's just my personal opinion. And again, it might be an example of the impressions and stuff like that that we talked about. Are we perfecting, performing, pleasing? Are we performing on our social media to try to indicate versus kind of respecting that a relationship's going to progress And we ought to allow it to progress at time. You know, there's no rule as to when you post that you're in a relationship or whatever, but it should come as a result of talking to each other. And are the boundaries in place? And do we have enough reliability and accountability to know that this is this is where we're at? And have are we respecting the sanctity of each other's opinions and stuff like that? So I I agree that we most often we tend to do some of that stuff artificially too fast. Yeah. Because again, we're trying to hotwire that connection. Yeah, you're right. And I and I think that's one thing that I tend to I do tend to perform on social media. And so I know that that's not a road I would want to go down in a relationship. I do not want to think, oh, what's this date going to be mean for Facebook later? That is not that's the last thing that I would want. And so that's why yeah. I tend to be I tend to share a lot on Facebook, but it's more like amusing things. And so I don't want to take something that's really important to me and put it out there. I would yeah. that it needs to be kept like you said, kept sacred and between the two of us. 
yeah, boundaries and stuff like that. And and believe me, you're not the only one who performs on social media. We <laughs> all do. That's what social media is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's supposed public, to be fun. You it's know? public performance. Right. And so we have to be cautious because that could that could really destroy the sanctity of a relationship or it could artificially give it a sense that there's more there than it's really there. Right. Um, integrity, the I stands for integrity. Um, and I'd like to, to, to just hit on this a little bit. In the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and maybe in other churches or whatever, we tend to def- define integrity. When you ask people what integrity is, the most common thing they say is doing the same thing in private that you would do in public. You know, not behaving differently in private than you do in public. And certainly that's a part of integrity, but it misses a fundamental component of integrity, which is what we do in public matters immensely. It's not just that I'm doing something bad in private and then I'm being a good person out, you know, that's a hypocrite. Um, It's obviously a breach of integrity, but integrity is so much more than just our private behavior versus our public behavior. It's all of that. So integrity is choosing courage over comfort. Integrity is doing what's right over what's fun, fast, or easy. Integrity is actually practicing our values, not just professing them. So if you go on any day, you could go on to LDS Planet or LDS Singles or Mutual. You could go on any day and you will find pictures of men and women who are dressed inappropriately Mm -hmm. for the Church of Jesus Christ standards. Now, those websites don't have to enforce that. Maybe they're not even members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But here is someone that that's probably an integrity breach which is, are you actually practicing the value? So if, if you have a picture of you in a bikini or without your shirt on in the bathroom with the mirror selfie, you know, guys, you know, if you're posting that and then you're saying you're a temple recommend holder and that you practice this and you're an active priesthood holder, that should cause us to pause and go, wait a minute, am I really being true to my values? And so integrity is, is this person going to choose to practice their values. And so when we look at people moving too fast or moving too slow, it could be a boundary problem, but it also may be something where we stop and pause and look at integrity. First, we look at ourselves. Am I practicing my values? Am I practicing my values? If I show up for that date immodestly dressed, if I show up, uh, if I show up not kind of professing the things, not practicing the things I actually profess to be practicing, then that's a breach of integrity. And we all want to be involved romantically with someone who is strong in their values, who lives what they what they say they live. And so, if you're on a date and someone's telling you about a lie they told at work or something like that, we're really talking about looking at integrity. So, integrity is a great measure. Again, integrity is being courageous over being comfortable. It's choosing what's right over what's fun, fast, and easy. So it goes back to what we talked about earlier. If we're trying to hotwire connection by performing, pleasing, impression management, trying to make everything look perfect and wonderful, and we're not really being honest, then we are a breach of integrity. And that I, that's not what I want to show. And it's also not what I want to have in my dating life. So integrity is a critical thing to look for. And that takes time to see integrity in your interactions with people. Yeah, that's what that's what's going through my head the whole time you're talking about integrity. Well, number one is I want to put my my real self out there and I want to actually perform the way I profess, which I feel like I, I'm I'm pretty good at. But this the bigger thing for me is I'm not going to know whether someone has integrity until I spend enough time with them to really see that because anyone can put on a good first date, second date, lots of dates really, but you've got to see them in a lot of different situations around different people doing different things and, you know, even associate with their friends to find out what their friends are like, uh, you know, maybe, maybe even meeting their Bishop or people from their ward because Eventually, a lack of integrity will pop its head up, but it may yeah. take a while, you know, especially it when you... Always, I mean, if you see a breach of integrity on the first date, then run. You yeah, know, I mean, heck that's, yeah. That's like, but, but I think it gets to these questions that we had of how do you keep people from moving way too fast? Well, when, if on the first date, we're dumping the whole load of hay on them and we're telling them our personal stories and our dirt and our abuse and our whatever kind of thing, and we're getting too comfortable and then we're touching on the first date or kissing on the first date or whatever kind of thing, we're going to miss the opportunity to watch it progress to a place where we're moving past. So we want to try to start out our date without performing 
or acting. And then we want to keep that not acting in front of it because that's what's going to help see the real us. Now, if someone makes a mistake or they do something wrong, do they apologize? Are they accountable? Are they reliable? Do they come back and correct it? If they said, you know what, that wasn't totally the truth of what I told you. I was so nervous and afraid that you wouldn't like me. And I kind of fudged a little bit and presented a better picture than what's really true. I mean, that's integrity. Boy, that is courageous. Like you might reject me if I tell you that's not really what happened, but I was so nervous that you wouldn't like me if I told you what happened. And so I got to circle back with you and tell you what's going on. Yeah. And I think part of this too is having the confidence that we are dateable we are lovable we we don't have to put on the show we don't have to try and put on uh uh, more put more out there than we really are but just to be confident that we are lovable we are dateable and that if this person isn't the right one that having the faith that there is someone that eventually will come along who's the right one i think that i think that's one of the hardest things because some of us who've been single for a while um start feeling like uh running out of options running out of time or whatever and to me that's a lack of faith because we know our heavenly father loves us he knows we know he wants us to have joy we know he wants us to be happy and if we're doing everything that we can on our part then we need to know that eventually the right thing is going to happen for us and we don't need to force that Yeah. yeah And really, I mean, if you think about it, the best that we can be is ourselves. Yes. And so if we go out into the dating world and we're trying to pretend to be someone else, then that's not going to help us find what we want. No, we want someone who totally thinks that we are awesome. Yeah. And if you're struggling with that, then that's something where a dating coach or a life coach or a counselor can help you with that yeah. or a bishop or something like that. You know, get get some support. If you're doubting who you are, if you're doubting your worth, if you're if you're finding yourself in those situations, then the best thing that you can do is get some support with that work on that because you want to bring the best authentic self to the dating world because we've got too much pretending and performing and acting going on. And it's just making us all feel lonely. I mean, that's not, that's even true in the general world. That's not, that's, that's true in dating definitely, but in the general world, we're all feeling kind of lonely and disconnected because we're all trying to perform and hustle for worthiness rather than just believing, no, I'm a child of God with divine worth. And that, you know, the question that we got of someone said, I've got a disability and I work in this kind of career said, who's going to date me? Who's going to want to date me? Well, I guarantee you there's somebody that's going to want to date you. There's somebody out there. And I don't know how you're going to go about finding that, but you're going to find them more likely by being yourself and being honest and authentic than trying to act like you're something that you're not. And so tell yourself that you're worth it. Get help to believe that you're worth it. Um, Call me up. You know, let's do a free consultation and talk about that or talk to Annette or or talk to your best friends or whatever, because because we want to help you feel good with that. Moving on real quickly so we don't take up too much time. Yeah. Uh, the N stands for non-judgmental. Um, and so when you're dating someone or when you're developing a relationship with someone, you want to you wanna be non-judgmental of them, assume the best, think good of them kind of thing, as well as don't immediately judge what you see. Like, like that dating example that you gave from the book that you've been reading or that you read, you know, don't judge somebody right away because they said they don't want to they don't really want to live in New York. They, they might just be expressing a preference for New York. It doesn't, you didn't ask yet if you're willing to move, you know, does that make sense? So someone says, I'd like to live in New York my whole life. That doesn't mean they're automatically disqualified. I've been rejected for just one little answer to a question. The travel and, question, right? Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know that, like the travel question. I think that came up in our last podcast about dating, but like, like don't be judgmental, give it time. Like let things unfold. We don't always see everything the first time. You know, this idea, um, I get asked all the time, the deal makers and deal breakers, we talked about that last time, that's being judgmental. That's like looking at people and going, now there are some things we need to make a righteous judgment. If somebody's obviously a breach of integrity or they're being angry or they're being mean or they won't respect your boundaries or whatever, obviously good judgment says that you should step back from that relationship. But when we're in there kind of, we're, we're sometimes too quick to judge one thing somebody says and we just give up. And a lot of second dates never happen because we're judgmental. We take one sentence, we take one thing, and definitely we do that online as well. And I don't know if you can get past that online, but sometimes we're judgmental. I made, I made a promise to myself that I would answer anybody who messaged me on a dating profile because I wanted to be non-judgmental. If they took the time to send me a message or a question, 
then I'm going to take the time to answer that. I think we should practice that. Be non-judgmental. We're all good people. We're all striving to find something in our life. And like you said, there's no reason why we can't be friends. The G stands for generosity, which relates to non-judgmental, is we should extend the most liberal assumption of people's behaviors and motives and intentions. Um, and, and hopefully we want them to do the same thing for us too. So if I get nervous on that first date and maybe I talk a little too much or I, or I stutter a little bit or whatever kind of thing, I'm hoping that you will look at me and say, he's probably nervous just like I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. And we need to just kind of keep going and let's relax. Let's, let's give people the best interpretation of their behavior. Let's not judge people because of their past. Um, let's judge them based on their present and let's see the best in people. I mean, is there anything more nervous than a first date yeah. <laughs> um, where you as an actual person is on track? Like when you go for a job interview, it's your skills and your background and your experience. When you go on a date, it's you. Yeah. It's like you're putting yourself out there. Let's be a little more generous with that. And recognize that we're probably both scared. You could even say that on your first date. Like, I am totally scared. Like, one guy on one of the questions we got says, I've got this fear. We've been dating for a while and I've got these fears and I don't know what to do. I, I want to tell her that I'm falling for her, but I'm also afraid of telling her I'm falling for her. Sometimes we need just to say, you know what? I'm terrified right now because I really like you. And I, you know, that's kind of scaring me and this is a good thing. And I, you know, I don't know what, what to do with that feeling or whatever. Sometimes we just need to say, I'm really nervous right now. And, and it's because I, I, I like you and I've loved our interactions online. And, and then let's be generous when someone says that, because that's going to help us. The principle of braving is to get to some of these questions that we had. Like there were questions about people moving too fast there were questions about people not understanding that I'm shy or that I'm nervous or that I might be a vulnerable talker. There were questions about somebody self-sabotaging. Well, braving is a wonderful tool to be able to evaluate where you're at in a relationship. So you can look at how I'm behaving. Am I reliable, accountable? Am I, am I respecting this confidentiality? Am I being generous? Am I being non-judgmental? Am I respecting the boundaries? And you can also evaluate your partner in that situation in each of those different areas. And this is way better than deal breakers, deal makers. This is a way better way to approach dating because you're going to walk in with the science of trust. This is decades of research on, on what exists and what can help us have the right things happen in a relationship. So you can see we're not trying to just have great first impressions. We're trying to develop a series of interactions with a person that would indicate. And what you said, Annette, is so powerful is these people should become our friends. Yeah. If we're following the principles of braving, we're taking our time to get to know another human being, another child of God. And it's okay if we decide not to date each other. It's okay. But if we're progressing in the right way, now there are some people out there that have no respect for boundaries. There are some people out there who are proposing on first and second dates or even before they even meet each other. There are some people pushing the physical and sexual boundaries and asking for pictures or trying to push for physical contact. That has no place in dating. And if you think you can go outside the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and find people in the world, people in the world are having sex on a first date and they don't even know each other's last names kind of thing. So if you think you can go somewhere else and find greener pastures, no, no. There are people everywhere that are going to push the boundaries. Obviously, those are not going to be situations that we want to move forward with. But the rest of them, there's a lot of neat opportunity to build another person in our life. So we should be thinking about these are relationships with people. Let's be brave and let's apply correct principles rather than just looking for some kind of random measurement thing like do you travel or not or you know, do you like baseball or whatever kind of thing. Let's get to know people by slowly going forward with it without action, without per, uh, performing and perfecting ourselves. Great. Awesome. This has been a great discussion, Jim. And um, I'm going to include some information on my website underneath this podcast, um, which is at AnnetteTalks.com. I'm going to include your uh, contact information. You said JimRJacobs.com or DrivingLessonsForLife.com, right? It's right. F-O-R, right? Yes, that's correct. Yes. And um, I'm hoping you'll come up with a little uh, sheet that gives us the braving acronym for those that didn't have a chance to write it down because sometimes people are driving or things. Yeah. Um, and 
Um, I recommend that the listeners go and, and look this up. And, and um, if you if you've gotten something out of this and you think Jim can help you some more, look him up, give him a call. I think, I mean, why do you think I do a podcast? I get this information from Jim. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so consultation too. There's no charge to just talk for the first time. I'd be happy to just talk to you and if, if, if see if it's a good fit for you. And if it's not, I won't be offended. And uh, maybe you'll get an hour of benefit from it if we just talk. And, uh, but if it would be something that would be helpful, that's, that's, that's what I love to do. Great. Thank you so much, Jim. And um, just so my listeners know, uh, Jim and I are going to continue on to our next episode, and we're going to talk about um, trying to navigate waters of dating people with um, sex and porn addictions next. So um, after you listen to this episode, um, the next one will be up oh, about a week later. And Jim, um, maybe we can do another dating advice episode sometime. Yeah, if you think we've got something else to share, let's oh, do it. Oh, there's plenty. There's plenty. <laughs> yeah, there's so many questions out there, and I think we can talk again. So thank yeah, you for please joining. Send in those, yeah, everybody, please send your questions. You know, Send them to Nat, put them on the Facebook, put them on the podcast, because that would help us know what would be most helpful for you if we do this again. Yes. And when we do this again. Thank you. And I'm, and I'm trying to get some of my listeners to go to uh, my Facebook page at Annette Talks. So Facebook, Annette Talks. Or if you want to send me an email, Annette at AnnetteTalks.com. And um, I thank you for listening um, to LDS Unmarried Life, where LDS singles gather. I'm going to bloom where I'm planted. I won't take things for granted. Come what may, bring it on. I'm going to love it.